All right. The wrap up show ha- featured Scott the engineer yesterday. It was his turn to be in the limelight. And he starts off by talking about his work and all that. And I'll skip all that. Did he talk about what he does? Well, he talked about yesterday. Remember how impatient I was for the Sound of Music soundtrack? Right. And uh, he talks South about Pacific. yeah, well, South Pacific. That's right. Thank you, Fred. I, you know, and and Scott goes into an explanation of his thought process in putting together these songs for me. And you could just fucking kill yourself. You could fall asleep. <laughs> you know, you could just fall asleep. Scott, you gave me the look like you just gave me right there, which is basically wah, wah, wah. it wasn't that this can't happen, but this is going to take a little time it, to it, happen. Yeah, because you got to find the songs. Okay, so Plan A is <laughs> as always. Plan A. I go to. Uh, I go to the YouTube, search for the song I need. You got to listen to it to make sure it's the version that you need because there's so many different versions of things floating around. I find one song out of the five on YouTube that I can use. Yeah, no one has I time download for that. that. In two minutes, I had it. Hmm. Plan B. Plan B. That's to go to. What is Plan B? Plan B was my plan. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even remember. But Already he was out of plans. Robin, he bored himself to death on the wrap up show <laughs> that he couldn't even pay attention to what he was saying. Plan B. Plan B. I mean, the man is a bore. He's dull. And he, 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 he forgot his dream. He is dull. Oh, hello there. It's me, Scott Salem. Do people avoid you in social settings? Have you put grocery clerks to sleep? I used to think I was alone. But three out of five people suffer from the same condition, dullness. And while there is no cure, there can be support. If you or someone you know is dull, call us at 718-BAG-5040. Take it from me, a dull icon. You're not alone. Remember, for a dull time, call 718-BAG-5040. He is a dull icon. It's so true. And so, uh, you know, I was listening to the wrap-up show. <laughs> he's a dull icon, Robin. He's he's not going to help you out of it. It's just a support group. <laughs> I mean, I'm literally on the wrap up show. He was describing his work process and getting South Pacific soundtrack, and he put himself uh-huh. to sleep. He he <laughs> he lulled himself to sleep. Well, first, plan what you do a. is, uh, Robin, plan A would be, you go to the internet, and then you look around for your song tracks, of which there are many. Then you, you have to just the right one. Yeah, because pick, there's so many out there that. That and then it's time for Plan B, which, uh... <laughs> so, then it got, it, somehow this conversation got into Scott's bowling ring that I bought him. And who knew that, you know, Scott displays it. And I often thought it was weird. Like, I spent, a, like, a considerable amount of dough on Scott's bowling ring. Uh-huh, and I'm yes. not even sure why, but I did it for him. I felt like being nice. I got caught up in the moment. But you never even see the guy wear it. And so the guys asked him about it. When he goes bowling, you should wear I it. I can't bowl with it. Why not? You wear it on the other hand. I do, but I, it weighs me down. It, yeah, okay. You it, know, it's so heavy. Do, Have you, you can I make a suggestion? You know where I think you should wear it? I'll wear it to the, the holiday Christmas. party. Yeah. Wear it to the holiday party. Yes, like, like the Super Bowl guys wear. You know, they wear their rings when they go out, you know? Have I don't you like to put on a suit and tie, put I on really, your ring. You know, I, it's your great. Ring. I love it, and I no, appreciate it, and... I don't like to. But you don't like to wear it. Then I don't even it. wear bowling because the guys, at, you know, when I bowl, they go, "Where's your ring?" I'm like, you know, I just don't. I'll wear it occasionally. Yeah, he he admits later on that he doesn't want to show off with his ring. The ring is for Scott's perfect game. He bowled a 300 at some point, right? And he didn't, you know, you're supposed to get a ring for that, but in bowling they have no money, so you have to pay for your own ring. So I figured I'd buy him the ring, and I got him the deluxe model. It's like 300 bucks or something. Yeah, you went, oh, I think it was more than that. I don't know. I went top level. Whatever <laughs> whatever the biggest amount, the diamond encrusted, you know, bowling ring. Right. He got top of the line. Yeah. So it turns out he's got some area in his house that he displays the ring. It's more like a trophy. I mean, right. it's, it's great. You know, I, I, I have it and I love it. Do you have um, it prominently displayed in your house? Yeah. So you have it Where? It's in the box, right? I have right? a mantle. I have bowling pins that have been signed by, like, Mark Roth and, you know. Well, hold on. A mantle, like, in your living room or something like my that? my dad. And your dad. Yeah. Okay, and what's on? Is this the bowling mantle, or is this, like, It sort of turned into the... Well, there's other things, but it sort of turned into the bowling mantle. There's okay. bowling pins and pictures and stuff. Well, be specific. Like, what's you said? Mark Roth signed the bowling uh, pin? Mark Roth and... Um, Johnny Petraglia, two of the all-time greats. <laughs> so you've got the pins up there. I got pins. You have the ring up there. The ring, some Anything? pictures. That's it. What's the ring in? The ring's just in the in the box. It's Why don't you get a little case for it, like a little a glass case, glass case for <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Right. 
So then, <laughs> this was the most telling thing of all. This is why I'm even spending time on this. And I have an interesting point to make about it, but the guys brought up whether or not Scott ever wrote me a thank you note. Now, mind you, I swear to you on a stack of Bibles, I've never even thought about it. But this is interesting, and then I'm going to tell you my theory on Scott. Do you think Howard knows that you're grateful? No. I <laughs> no, I think Did so. Did you write either. him a handwritten note? I didn't write him a handwritten note. Did you write him an email, though? No. Did you just thank him I, on the I air? I thanked him personally off the air. It's not good enough. Sorry. Well, you said what? Hey, Howard, thanks in passing? I said... Well, yeah, like, I really appreciate it. You didn't have to do it. You could Gary, still send a note now. Gary, big mistake. Yeah, but huge, part. huge. Howard oh, really? locks that stuff away in his head. You hear him say over and over again, handwritten note. Not an email, not a call, handwritten note. Write him a nice Christmas card. I, I can year. tell you that I write him handwritten notes, and I can already tell you that he probably gets pissed because I don't write in cursive anymore. I don't and write he in probably cursive. Thinks, he probably thinks it's fucking annoying. What doesn't he write in? Cursive. In cursive. Like handwritten instead of printed. Like script. I don't, it's script like, instead of, I print instead of writing in what's script. What's wrong with that? I would think that you find every card I've ever gotten from you, you write in script. I, I just don't write script. Oh, really? I wouldn't, well, I wouldn't judge you on that. Listen, listen. The, the theory I have with Scott is, it's not a theory, it's fact. Scott's one of those guys who walks around all day with a chip on his shoulder saying, you know, nobody really appreciates me. Nobody shows their appreciation no one, you know, he's very consumed with people not I'm treating, sure. yeah, like they, they, he's somehow <laughs> wronged all the time. <laughs> so here, you would think, if that was the case, Scott would be extra sensitive to that. So now somebody appreciated him. Somebody did something for him that, he, that they, they went out of their way for him. And he doesn't think to write a handwritten note or send an email. And if he did something for someone... He would be bitching and grousing how no one sent him a note, how no one thanked him properly. But isn't it interesting how here's an opportunity for him to teach everyone how to behave, and he doesn't do it. And, it, 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 and it, it's true of all of us, really, isn't it? Well, I think with Scott it goes to another level where this is just a minicum of the appreciation he deserves. Yes. There's no amount of appreciation that will fill the black hole that is in Scott's life. <laughs> you know. And, and I so, do remember his thank you. I was sitting here doing the show, and he walked mm -hmm. by and slumped over like a snail. And he goes, well, thank you very much. <laughs> and I went, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, Scott. And I didn't think nothing of it. I was happy to do it. Okay, thank you. And then he just left. Now, by the way, I never gave it a moment's thought. I never thought about it. But And even on the level that I'm his boss, I mean, let's face it, if it wasn't for me, Scott wouldn't be working here. You'd think on some level, he'd go, hey, that's a good opportunity to write Howard a note. That's how I would think that way if it was like, you know. We were surprised. Can you imagine like, like, like when, you know, Mel Carmison or now Jim Meyer got me a gift and I didn't send him a note? I mean. You just walked by quickly yeah. and said, thanks. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Jim. No, we were surprised. We really were surprised because it was a big thing. It was a big thing for you to do for him. And also that he was really, you know, he was going to get the ring for himself, but he was not going to get the top of the line one no, because it was expensive. My wife would have killed me, Robin. <laughs> Can you imagine if I spent money on that? <laughs> well, anyway, so there's my rap on Scott. We had, there was another funny moment yesterday that Jason just pointed out to me. You know, we're talking about that, you know, Xbox gave us this demo. And so uh, there was an uh, uh, email that went out and said, hey, if you want to go see the demo... Go, you know, this is when it is. And it went out to anybody. Right. So five or six of us went to the demo. Right. And we didn't, you know, we went, you know, we talked about it on the air, but that's it. And we found out that the four or five people that went are going to get Xboxes. Right. So Scott was complaining yesterday, you know, I wish I would get an Xbox. And Jason turned around to him on the air and he said, Did you get the memo about going to the demo? Scott goes, Yeah. And he goes, well, why didn't you go? And he goes, I was busy. So Jason goes, well, how, then what can you be mad about? Like, you were invited right, to come. You you did not go. You were invited, dude. And nobody knew and that. And nobody knew that, right? No, no, no. They just said, come and see it. Right. See, now I got a fucking, you know. What? Like, what? misinformation this guy has is go unbelievable. I didn't say, everyone. I didn't complain I didn't get an Xbox. I just said, they said, they were, they were talking about JD complaining about he didn't know what to do with it. And I said, well, if he doesn't want it, I'll take it. That's all. I didn't say I wasn't happy not getting it. I just made Look a how comment. Angry you are. What? Look how yeah, angry you I'm are. I'm very angry right now. <laughs>
It, no, it, it means it's the most animated I've ever seen. Speak you. the truth. I didn't complain about not getting one. I didn't. Never said a word. All I said was, if JD is is burdened by getting one, I'll take it. That and is Jason funny. Jason asked you, you know, do, do you wish you got one? You go, yeah, I wish I would have got one. Of course, I wish I would have got one, but I didn't complain about it. He, he makes it sound like I'm whining and bitching about. Yeah. I didn't get one. I didn't get one. I never said a what word is it, about Jason? it. Get, you go away, please. Why, why, we don't why, need why, his comments. Why, why, okay. <laughs> we don't, now I want to hear what he we, has to we say. We don't need his comments. I didn't want to bitch say? about. Well, it. I, I came in to take a picture of angry Scott, but right. no, he said on the rapture, he goes. Oh, I don't get an Xbox. You know, it was it was one of those. Yeah, yeah he did say the comment about JD, but he also had a comment like, oh, no one gives me an Xbox. It, it, is, was, it is funny that what JD, am I, the piss boy? JD is so burdened by yeah. getting an Xbox. I, I it is funny. JD is so upset. He's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I, I got to get another input <laughs> for, my, for my TV, and I don't have enough inputs because I have other games, and I, I don't know. And I'm just like... Holy this mackerel. This has caused him a problem. Like, like, he's upset about getting the Xbox. Oh, uh, even today? Yeah. So, like, yesterday, I, I, I practically skipped down to the office, picked up the Xbox, gave a big hug to the person who gave it to me, ran sure. home, hooked it up. It's I'm, the hottest item on the planet. I, I'm besides myself. Thank you again to our sales team, to Xbox. Okay. It's awesome. <laughs> you never seem that appreciative either that we put him in business. Because you know what? He hated <laughs> He hated business. the business. Yeah. He hated it. We put him in. Like, that whole business is predicated on being the cool guy who shows up at the party that kind of makes the fun happen. And the least fun, the least fun person on the planet is Scott the Engineer. When you look at him, there's nothing fun going on. When you say to yourself, oh, let me see, I want to put together a really fun party. Yeah, who should I get? <laughs> and it was so great. Out of all the businesses he picked, like Jack Spector, when we knew him and he was a DJ at NBC, he, he went in the eyeglasses business. It made sense. There was not a fun guy. Scott picked a part... Like a young man's party game. Like, the, you couldn't pick a business that he's less appropriate for. And anybody who's been to a party knows these DJs put on a show. Oh, and, and they, they move and they dance and they're, yeah. and they're like kind of the guy who was always fun to have at a party. Right. Like Fun Bobby from Friends. C you couldn't cast worse than to have set us. Scott in that job. I've always wanted to make extra income, and I've come up with a plan. Oh, yeah, what's that? <laughs> I'm going to be a party DJ. What? <laughs> well, I'm going to be a party DJ. <laughs> uh, Scott, you're not a fun guy. Oh, no, no, I really am. Ask anyone. I'm Mr. Fun. <laughs> but even the way you talk on that monotone, I mean, well, I can be peppy. You're going to be, you, let me understand that. Now, all the jobs in the world, like you open up the New York Times and the look in the classifieds, all the jobs in the world, you're going to train yourself now to be a party DJ. And of course the business went up in smoke. We, <laughs> and like idiots, we invested in it. You know. Remember when he left the money on the top of yeah. the car? I mean, and he was so, <laughs> he was so bad at it that I'm not making a joke and it's, and I'm not, and I'm not trying to be funny here. He was so bad at, at this being a party DJ that finally he came down. They hired him at a little kid's party, and the little kids kicked him and then knocked him over. and Beat then him up. Beat him up and actually pushed him down on the ground. <laughs> like, I'm not kidding. Like, you could have write, you know, it's like a Rodney Dangerfield movie. Fun, 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 fun. Put your hands up, baby, put your hands up, baby. Fun, fun, fun. Fun, fun, fun. Hiya, Scott, the engineer for fun, fun, baby, fun. <laughs> I remember he'd play this and he'd lead the crowd. And, right. And it was yeah. the most lethargic rendition of Hands yeah. Up I've ever seen. Yeah, we actually saw him do it. We were at Gary's <laughs> wedding. We forced him to do it because we wanted to see him actually do Hands Up. And it was just fucking pathetic. Oh, and that, 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 even the, um, the, the answering machine with his message was, it was so great. It was like, Please leave your name and phone number with area code, please. And any brief message you care to leave. Once again, please leave your name and phone number. And thanks for calling Rocket Entertainment. Music the way you want it. Enjoy the rest of your day. So Scott, <laughs> this was Scott overcompensating for... Oh, my fun. goodness. <laughs> that was his fun voice. Like That's the most animated I've ever heard him. Hi, everybody. 
The life of the party's on the phone. Please leave a message, please. Please. Have please. a great day. That's overly polite. <laughs> yeah. He's like some sort of weird, like. I'm like Bob Eubanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like, but he's like, you, you know, you know what, you know what he's like? He's like, uh, like you ever go to like, uh, an optometrist who has no personality and then, and then, but they, but they've been taught or trained somehow to try to have a little bit of personality. Hi. <laughs> you know, and it's just, you could tell he's just suffering through that announcement. <laughs> <laughs> he must have done it 50 times. Oh, that wasn't, <laughs> let me try to pep no, it up some more. Do they sound happy? Everyone thinks I sound lethargic. Please leave your name. Please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm servicing the public. I have to be engaging and polite. Please. First word, please. God. Could you add more pleases into this? <laughs> you think I should add another please in there and just show people how grateful I am for their business? I like to say please mm. at the beginning and please at the end. And the business has been such a success. And then Scott would go through a string of assistants. He'd pay him like 50 bucks for like this back-breaking work. They had to carry all the equipment. Scott didn't want to carry the equipment. He went into a business with the, got equipment he couldn't right. carry. Oh. So he'd find one of our interns, and since they were working free here, for 50 bucks, he figured he'd hire them, and they got wise to it. Most of our interns have rich parents. Anyway, they have 50 bucks. <laughs> please leave your name please. and phone number with area code, please. And any brief... Please, with area yeah. code, please. <laughs> Again, so, please. So it's awfully close to that Nambla guy. <laughs> please. Please leave your name and phone number with area code, please. And any brief message you care to leave. Once again, please leave your name please. and phone number. And thanks for calling Rocket Entertainment. Music the way you want it. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest. <laughs> I hope I've swept you Ooh, off your feet. Clearly, by now you've probably signed on the dotted line with my exuberance. <laughs> but you've been turned on. I've got the kind of energy no one can turn down. It was uh. that third please that got you. <laughs> please, 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 and thank you, and have a wonderful day. Admit it, I've grabbed you. <laughs> <laughs> and the only people hiring him for parties were people who listen to us and want to do fun. They did make him wear his toupee. Oh, but remember the day, you know, he did all this for this money, and then he put the money on the top of the car. And then he drove away and it blew off the top of the car. Oh, yeah, I didn't end up making any money on that job. <laughs> and then very quietly, he didn't want to admit to us, but he hated the business and <laughs> stopped going out on jobs. Yeah. And then one day we're like, hey, how's that rocket entertainment? Uh, um, I've, I've stopped operation for a while. Uh, nobody's celebrating. No, nobody's having any parties. Yeah, right. <laughs> parties. It's a very bad Nobody's economy. getting married. Nobody's having any birthday. Uh, uh, I only get funerals now. <laughs> Everybody ready? Come on. I haven't heard this in Everybody ready? All right, Aaron. Come on. You're going to help me? Uh, the saddest. I want to make a movie about a sad DJ. Uh, come on, everybody. And then he had his outfit that he wore, like a, like it was black tie, you know. Right. He was always in a tuxedo. And then, and then, and then the ultimate humiliation. Scott was forced to learn all the hand moves for hands up. He had a. He had the whole choreography. Oh, yeah, and he handed out stuff, too. People, and they get to the part with your heart, he'd point to his heart. And then yeah. He'd reach. It was so heartbreaking. That's like a heart massage. <laughs> yeah, it was like, oh, my God, of all the occupations for him to pick. I'm the life of the party. But he never grew with it either, you know, like how these people bring in dance troops and all that. <laughs> Scott didn't do anything. Oh, I can get dancers if you want them. <laughs> it's like it was that kind of thing. If you really want that, I could get but it. But do you want to water? down this experience <laughs> really like if you want a really depressing party hire scott where's all the equipment hey scott where's the equipment now because he had to do i bet he sold it he didn't oh, it's give... better than that howard what it's I mean, better than that where's well, our right. money Hold on, scott, go tell i want my fucking there. money <laughs> that's long gone <laughs> we we get the equipment yeah we <laughs> i'm fixing up my house i want my money back <laughs> where is the equipment now scott I have it in my house. Oh, I you still, do? Yeah, but I mean, it's the, the equipment's like 20 years old. Oh, all right. Well, I'm just asking. I mean, I replaced some as I and, went and, and updated. Scott, didn't you tell us the other day that, that you left some of the equipment at K-Rock and they lost it? Well, that no. Well, yeah, that was my um, <laughs> that was one thing. That was my oh. turntables and my console. You left them at K-Rock? No, I, they borrowed, they rented that equipment from me for a while. 
And then when we left, I tried to get it back, and nobody could figure out what the fuck happened to it. Oh my god! Mm, typical Scott. Yeah, and I kept trying to get it back, and you know that was they were very expensive turns. Want to lead us in a hands up right now, or no? Or you forgot that's that. not going to happen. So what? So when did you quit the business? Like when did you realize it wasn't working? That was about uh, eight years ago. Eight years ago, yeah. yeah. Eight, eight years, years, ago, years ago, it lasted that long? I, I had 50 years old. I'm like, oh, fuck, this is not working out. <laughs> you figured it out, finally. <laughs> yeah. yeah it was just... wasn't working from day one. When, when, did you incorporate <laughs> Rocket Entertainment? Like, this, was was the company, like, did it have a trademark and everything? No, it was just yeah. I was doing business as. I didn't so have... is the name Rocket Entertainment still available? Somebody could take that? Yeah. Well, I, I have it Imagine listed. somebody takes it and then builds it into a multi-billion dollar empire. Oh, my God. That would be the best. And Scott's like, oh, my God. What happened? I owned Rocket Entertainment. All my dreams and hopes. Like, on what planet did you say to yourself? I didn't. Out of all the career choices you could have, like, it, why? Because I DJed you? at clubs and I knew how to. I, oh I didn't host God. at clubs. but I mean, I, No kidding. I DJ the clubs. I mean, you've got to look in the mirror. No, you don't look like the fun life of the party. And you've never been the life of the party. No. You've never been that guy. Yeah, but I, I was able to overcome some, <laughs> some of my faults. No, you weren't. I was handy capable. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, anyway, there he is. The equipment is uh, was somehow it's gone. Is gone. The equipment we paid for. Well, some of it is thanks gone. For, thanks for keeping track of the all stuff the stuff I didn't use. But, no. I mean, it, it, they lost <laughs> it. And then, I don't know. I got the other stuff. I got all the records and CDs. I got the wires. And everything. Didn't we invest like ten grand in no. that business? No, I don't think it was, it was that much. Each, Howard. Oh. Yeah. It's like yeah. twenty five hundred. Oh. And by the way, he's got everything except the turntables and the stuff you play it with. Yeah, right. <laughs> the heart, the heart could, of the system. I, I could get right back into business any time, <laughs> except for the fact I don't have any turntables. I stopped using turntables in like nineteen ninety two. I have my <laughs> smartphone. <laughs> hmm. I could do everything from this little phone, and that gives me a chance <laughs> right. to free my hands up for hands up. <laughs> yeah. Hands up. <laughs> this is the great. I said, I went home one day and I go, all the fucking occupations for this guy to choose. I said, I got to invest in this. This is the greatest fucking thing ever. I mean, just to watch oh, those. Hey, you get out of here. Hey, Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Ronnie? You get the fuck out of here. <laughs> what happened? He used to DJ at when we had the block parties. Right. He used to DJ with his cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, and it never fucking worked. Technology. Ever. Oh, foiled again. Oh, my God. Sells up, baby sells up. Oh, my God. It was so funny. Shuli used to break funny. his balls so bad. I mean, so how is that DJing if he's on a cell phone? Uh, I, mean, I don't know. There's no show. He that's all you need. He's a guy, but, but that's like he turning to, on serious and having a party. He used, all you to, need come, he used to come in and look. He used to tell you need this. I need this cable. This cable. I need this cable. Why didn't he bring his own fucking cable? I don't know. Oh, exactly. <laughs> I think he did. No, I did. I he went out and bought a cable. <laughs> I got to plug in my cable. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It was so funny. You don't DJ with much more than a cell phone these days. If you, yeah, if you Sure. I see these guys with big rigs. Mm. They, they, this whole EDM movement and you all. You know, Avicii does it with a smartphone. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm Avicii. They all use uh, computers now. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Course, one little, la one little laptop, yeah. this guy was. What was it? I, uh, DJ Hollywood uses just yeah. a laptop? I still uh, keep they my They use hand. some other, uh, other gear, but. I still keep my hand in the business. I the mean, best was the cell phone, dude. Yeah. I mean, while I'm retired, yeah, I never try worked. to keep up with the technology. <laughs> mm. I'm like what you call a legacy performer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I try to stay with the times. I work off my cell phone now. I'm old school. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just old. <laughs> <laughs> No school involved. <laughs> I, I remember him at um, uh, Howard TV uh, yeah, Christmas they, they, they party. They hired him right. for the Christmas yeah, party. Yeah, and Joey, Joey party. Boots was his roadie. Yeah, right, yeah. And yeah. yeah, they were both in tuxedos. It was the greatest. It was like two penguins. <laughs> <laughs> that All was right, me. Boys. You know, walking down memory lane is nothing better, but... <laughs> That was a great business. All right, thank you, Scotty. Thank you. Scott, uh, thank you. Uh, please, thank you. The best is your answering machine. Please. Please, please, please. Please. <laughs> please. <laughs> you know what it is? Scott's around us, and he sees show business going on. He sees people making a living in show business, and he's just trying to figure out how to tap into it. Like, even with the stand-up comedy, that was like, then he said, well, I'll do stand-up. It can't be that difficult. But he's like Fred and Ethel, you know. Ricky was in show business. Yeah, right. And everybody else just wanted to do something. Right. Lucy was always trying to figure out how to <laughs> sort of... Worm her way. Crowbar her way. Yeah. In. Thank you. 
Oh, good, good, good. That, re- that reminds me, I got a great, this is a true story. Another great career move. <laughs> we get off the plane today, me and Artie, and we're walking through the, the airport, and a, a guy comes up to us, and he goes, hey, guy, how, how you doing? He recognized us. He goes, can I get a picture? And we go, fine. Scott's that guy you don't even want to talk to at a party, <laughs> let alone to go watch him on stage as he as he engages you in conversation. Just imagine what he thinks of comedians, that he thinks all he has to do is get up there and have a microphone. He probably sits there in front of the TV and you know, he turns to his wife and his son and goes, you know, it's really not that hard. I, <laughs> I did it uh, for a while and... Uh, you know, I was able to get up on stage and hold the crowd. <laughs> they were quite boisterous, actually. I mean, uh, it's not that hard. Take a picture. The guy turns to me, hands me the camera, and goes, do you mind? Well, fuck him. Why do I look like a photographer? <laughs> <laughs> Why do I look like a photographer? <laughs> photographer? I don't even get the word out. <laughs> <laughs> The best career choice. There's got to be a way. He knows how to pick them. There is an audience for me. I just can't figure out what to do when I get there. <laughs> hmm. Uh, Dave play? Chappelle, Eddie Murphy, Scott Sale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if things got so bad. I, I even started a rock band, and I kicked Scott out of it. It was his band. We yeah. took the name of his band, The Losers. Right. We based it on him, and then we kicked him out. Again, no fucking respect. Well, you know, we- now he's riding danger. <laughs> I know. I'll, I'll, you, you, know, you know what seemed to work? Maybe nobody's heard it before. If you get up there and say, I get no respect, hey, that could be my catchphrase. I don't think uh, anybody alive is doing that right now. Hey. If that works out, I'll do, excuse me. Yeah. I don't get any... How about I combine them? I'll go like this. I don't get any respect, excuse me. <laughs> but I'm doing it differently. Huh. Huh. Should I do my Rodney slogans or my Steve Martinix slogan? <laughs> and you know what? What do I look like? A photographer? <laughs> <laughs> Damn that COPD. If <laughs> only I could breathe. All those cigarettes really messed up my timing. It's the cigarettes that hold me back from stand up. I could be Eddie Murphy if I had good lungs. <laughs> I have a band on the show called The Losers, and the reason it's called The Losers is because it was named after me. I'm the head loser. Now, the total disrespect is I got kicked out of the fucking band. I know. I'll throw in the word fuck. Come on. I mean, come on. I'm the head loser. I get kicked out. That'll make me seem contemporary. Let me repeat it. You didn't hear it. Perhaps you didn't Uh, understand the concept. My joke just bombed, but uh, I know if I give it a double tap, it'll work. It's it's a timing thing. You repeat a bad joke and people get crazy from it. You get it? Now, the losers was named after me, and then they kicked me out. Uh, I said... (laughs) <laughs> Hello. The losers were named after me, and then they kicked me out. I'd like to yell it out to uh, get the point across, but I have no lung capacity. Can you believe it? <laughs> I'm telling you, this shouldn't be this hard. Uh, there goes my sitcom opportunity. Right out the window. Hmm, I wonder if I'll audition for Saturday Night Live. Uh. What kind of bullshit is that? When I say bullshit, it makes me appear younger. By the way, we put up a picture of Scott DJing on Twitter and Instagram so you can have fun looking at that. <laughs> go Cavaliers! Yeah, Cleveland! Let's go! Huh, well, everything. I'm pulling out all the good stuff and nothing's happening. Huh, maybe if I lead them in hands up. <laughs> I'll go back to my roots. Hey. Maybe I should become a DJ again. I got my cell phone. <laughs> All you need is a cell phone. I don't need Joey Boots anymore. I can cut him out of the operation. <laughs> oh, I left my wire back at the hotel. <laughs> well, there goes that plan. Mm-hmm. Uh, that wire, that pesky wire. <laughs> no Lady Gaga for you. <laughs> you know, I, I'm portrayed as uh, the sad sack of the show. Yeah, so- that's completely not true. As you can see. <laughs> Anybody here have a wire? I could plug in right now. 
fucking loser, but I just want to say something, you know? My wife, my wife doesn't have an emotional friend. That's for sure. Uh-huh. Hmm. Right? All right, I seem to have them now. Right? I don't have monkey teeth and sewer breath. Oh, monkey teeth. Uh, see? <laughs> what is this uh, delivery uh, he's got? Look. Well, you know, I had that lung issue uh, back in the uh, 90s. Uh, I haven't fully recovered. There's still scar tissue on my lungs. Uh, I don't have monkey teeth. <laughs> or sewer breath. <laughs> Hi uh, both, how you doing? Hi uh, both. Yeah! You know, I, I don't feel bad. You booed all the best, so I don't give a shit if you pull me anyway. Mm. Oh boy. Oh boy. Pull me anyway. Yes. Yeah. He's a trip, honey. Anyway, I do have to. Oh my God, we've been talking for an hour and fifteen minutes, and I haven't oh, taken no. one break yet. Uh, I would like to do a show one day with no breaks, just to prove that I could do it. Hands up, baby, hands up, everybody, please, off your feet now. <laughs> hands up, hands up, baby, hands up. All right, everyone, let's head down for the bar mitzvah bucha. Here I should come. give up. I should give up. Everybody give up. <laughs> give up like me, everybody. Lose your turntables. I gave up when my hair gave up. Here's a verse. Life sucks, baby, life sucks. Everything I touch goes to shit. Life sucks. Life sucks so bad. Ugh. That actually almost worked. Stand up. When I do stand up, people boo me. People boo when me. When I do me. stand up, they all throw up. <laughs> they all what? They, they all throw up. up. <laughs> throw up, baby, throw, throw up. up. That's I make they... people sick. <laughs> when they see me, they go ick. Uh, all right, we'll be back right after these words.